Hello, my name is Thomas Lamb and I am in the Atmospheric Science Department at the University of Washington. And today I will be deriving an equation for the average amount of solar radiation at any po point on the Earth um, over the year. So we will, to begin, we will start with an equation for the hour, for the solar zenith angle given by theta s, s which I will define in a moment here, times the sine of the latitude times the sine of the declination angle plus the cosine of both the same latitude and declination angle as well as times the cosine of the hour angle. Okay, each of these terms Theta sub s, the solar zenith angle, defines the property by which the sun is away from solar noon, or directly overhead. Okay, here I just continue to explain the solar zenith angle, that it is this, wherever the sun is, away from solar noon, that is the angle you're at. Here I just explain that the sunrise and sunset are at zero and 180 degrees. Now I explain latitude. I fast forward mainly because this is a familiar topic to most of you, but I wanted to explain it anyways, just so we get a picture for when we explain tilt. Here I show that the poles are at 90 degrees north and south, and that the maximum solar radiation is incident on the equator. And here, this term is the declination angle, which this would be if our Earth was just straight up and down. However, it is off kilter. And it is tilted off of the normal, apologize for the tilted line, by an angle of about, or exactly 23.45 degrees during the summertime in the northern hemisphere, and would be off the other direction in negative 23.45 degrees during winter. Okay, and H is the hour angle, which is the longitude of the sub uh, solar uh, point relative to the sun's location in the sky, and that changes throughout the day. We will use that value later. All right, so now we will continue with our second equation, which is for the solar flux per unit area, which we'll define as Q, being the total solar uh, radiation incident at the top of the atmosphere times the value of d bar over d squared times the cosine of the solar zenith angle. And this is where our equation from before will come in. d bar for, um, is the average, the mean distance from the Earth to the Sun, and uh, d is the mean. There is the actual distance from the Sun. This value will go to one as an approximation in our example. So we will be fortunate. So now substituting other equation in and integrating over all angles throughout the day. That was that hour angle h. We arrive at a solution for the average amount of solar radiation per day if we divide by 24 hours as well. Arrive at the total solar radiation divided by pi that comes from integrating over all the hour angles from sunrise to sunset times one, our approximation here, times the initial hour angle times the sine of the latitude times the sine of the declination angle plus the cosine of the declination angle times the sine of the initial hour angle. Okay, so this is our final form. So for Seattle, for example, Seattle is at a latitude of 47 degrees north, so we'll leave that as a positive 47, and during the summer the tilt in the northern hemisphere is in our favor, so it is positive, where we get more solar radiation. And during the winter, the 
the value of the declination angle is negative 23.45 degrees. So if we looked at to compare a certain time of day, if we compare it at 9 a.m. in the morning, so if we take our entire day, 24 hours, and we took a fourth out, we end up with eight, and we'll do that divided by two pi, which is in for our radian conversion. Let's get out pi over four. We use this now to substitute for our final answer. So given that the initial solar radiation is about 1360 watts per meter squared, and our latitude of 47 degrees, and our declination angle of 23.45 for summer, and our hour angle of pi over 4, we come to an approximate value of solar radiation for summer being 102.66 watts per meter squared. So we are gaining solar radiation in the summer. And in the winter, this value, the only difference is the declination angle goes to a negative 23.45 degrees, and we come to a value of negative 95.24 watts per meter squared. And that is an example. Thank you for listening.